welcome to Healthy by Chem series. In this video, I will explain to you the life cycle of malaria parasite. Please, if you've not subscribed to my channel yet, kindly do well to subscribe for me. Thank you very much. So we know malaria to be one of the deadly disease that affects a lot of people worldwide. At first, people used to think that malaria only affects the people in the tropics, but now a lot of evidence have shown that even the people in the non-tropical regions also get malaria. Malaria disease is caused by the plasmodium parasite and then the organism that serves as a vector for the plasmodium parasite is the female Anopheles mosquito. A vector is just an organism that serves as a delivery guy, in other words, an organism that harbors the actual parasite that causes the disease. So right now we have about 50 species of plasmodium parasite being discovered so far and out of these 50 species only 4 of them have been discovered to cause malaria and these 4 include the plasmodium falciparum, the plasmodium ovale, the plasmodium malaria and then the plasmodium vivax. Recently there is a certain species called the plasmodium nolexi and this parasite to this particular species too has been reported to cause malaria that is the plasmodium nolexi so let's talk about the life cycle of malaria that is the main business for the day so the life cycle of plasmodium parasite is broadly divided into two main phases we have the sporogonic phase and then the schizogonic phase the sporogonic phase occurs within the female Anopheles mosquito whereas the schizogonic phase takes place within the human host. Let me start by tackling the sporogonic phase, the phase that occurs within the mosquito. So the sporogonic phase starts when a female Anopheles mosquito feeds on an infected person's blood and then takes up a gametocyte from the person's blood. When a person got infected with malaria, there is this particular gametocyte found in the blood. So when the malaria bites such a person, when the, when the mosquito bites such a person again, it picks up the gametocyte. So when the gametocyte is picked up by the mosquito, it finds itself in the mid gut of the mosquito. And then within the mid gut, the gametocytes will develop into male and then female gametes. Take note that the, the mosquito picks up both male and the female gametocytes from the blood and these male and female gametocytes further develops into the male and then female gametes in the mid guts of the mosquito. So the male and female gametes will then undergo fertilization to produce the zygote which is called ukinate. The zygote is called ukinate and then the ukinate will then penetrate the mid gut wall. And then when it penetrates the mid-gut wall, it then further develops into the oocyst. So oocyst will then produce thousands of sporozoids and then spore and store it within it. So this is how the this is basically what we have to know about the sporogonic phase. The whole sporogonic phase starts from the picking up of gametocytes, the picking up of gametocytes from the infected person's blood all the way to the development of it to form the oocyst which will produce several sporozoids. Let me zoom on to talk about the schizogonic phase that is the phase that takes place within a human host. The schizogonic phase is also further divided into two main stages. We have the erythrocytic stage and then the exoerythrocytic stage. So in the human being Certain cycles will take place within the red blood cells, that is the erythrocytes. So those stages are the erythrocytic stage and then some portion of the stage 2 will take place outside the erythrocytes. So we call that stage the exoerythrocytic stage. So as I said, the erythrocytic, the exoerythrocytic state, the exoerythrocytic stage will take place within the liver whereas the erythrocytic stage as the name implies will take place within the red blood cells that's the erythrocytes so i'm going to combine these two stages and then explain them i'm going to explain it by combining these two phases these two stages together 
So the whole of the schizogonic stage starts when a female Anopheles mosquito bites a person. So when the mosquito bites a person, it releases sporozoids into the bloodstream of the individual. And then the sporozoids will move all the way into the liver. You might ask yourself that, why is it that there are several organs in the body, but the sporozoid didn't go anywhere aside the liver alone? The reason is that the liver has certain receptors on their surface, which serve as which serve as um, a binding site for the sporozoids. So the sporozoids will behave like a ligand and then there are certain receptors on the surface of the liver. So the sporozoids will bind to these receptors and then find their way into the liver. So in the liver, the sporozoids will then develop into a schizone and then the schizones will then burst to release merozoids. This is basically the exoerythrocytic stage. This is the stage that is taking place outside the erythrocyte. So, as I said, the sporozoid is going to be released and after it's being released, they will move into the liver and after getting into the liver, the sporozoid will further develop into the schizones which will further on best to release the merozoids into the blood. So, when the merozoids lands in the blood, they will attack the erythrocytes. So when the merozoids attack the erythrocytes, the erythrocytes, will, the merozoids in the erythrocytes will then develop into an immature trophozoids, an immature trophozoids which are ring in shape. Then the immature erythrocytes will then further develop into mature forms of the erythro, the mature forms of the trophozoids. So immature forms of trophozoids will develop into mature forms of trophozoids which will further on develop into a schizone and then the schizones will best to release merozoids into the blood again for them to attack other red blood cells. So the various signs and symptoms that we see when someone gets malaria are as a result of what is going on in the erythrocytic stage. For the exoerythrocytic stage, that is the stage which is taking place within the liver, it leads to no complications. But the stage that is occurring in the blood is what leads to the various signs and symptoms like fever, chills, anemia, and then others like headache. So there are some, some of the trophozoids here some of the trophozoids instead of them developing into some of the immature trophozoids instead of them developing into the mature forms of trophozoids will undergo asexual reproduction to produce the male and then female gametocytes once again for it to be ready for picking up by another mosquito to sustain and then initiate the sporogonic phase in the mosquito once again so this is basically all we have to know about the plasmodium life cycle. But before then, you see, there are certain individuals, they will get malaria and then be treated. But within a short time, or let's say within months and then even a year, they get malaria again. Although they will be sleeping in a treated mosquito net, they will be sleeping by spraying their, their rooms with mosquito repellents and all that. But they still get malaria. This is due to the fact that there are certain species of Plasmodium, that's the Plasmodium ovale and then the Plasmodium vivax. These two species, when the sporozoid gets into the liver, it has the ability of developing into hypnozoids and then hide itself within the liver. So the hypnozoids will hide itself within the liver so, for so many years. So when you administer an antimalarial drug like the atesonate and modiaquine to the individual, it won't be able to attack those hypnozoids that are hidden in the liver. So they will stay there until it then develops into schizons again and then continue the process leading to the various signs and symptoms that we see in malaria patients. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel to support me. See you next time.